Welcome back to another episode on GEMS Podcast. I'm your host, Genesis Amaris Kemp, and with me today is Kara Batar. And here's a bit about Kara. Kara Nicole Batar holds a Juris Doctor from Duke University School of Law and practice high stakes corporate litigation at one of the largest law firms in the Southeast. While practicing law, she realized that despite having what is deemed a high level of success, many people were unhappy, stressed out, worn out, unhealthy, and lacking in a love and excitement for life. Kara now combines the dedication and commitment that it took to become a successful attorney, real life training, and what it takes to succeed at high levels and extensive research, experience and training, and how to optimize our lives to help individuals excel in their professional and creative endeavors, be energized and excited about life, and experience their full potential. She does this through optimization programs. She developed coaching and teaching Kundalini Yoga. Kara is a KRI certified instructor of Kundalini Yoga. And without further ado, please welcome Kara Batar to GEMS Podcast. Hi, thank you so much for having me. It's so nice to be here. My pleasure. And today we're going to unpack what does optimism optimization look like and are you optimizing your life so you could have the level of experience that you desire and not necessarily what the world wants you to have because sometimes people will see success as you know the money the cars what social media says what their family measures success as and that's not really personal success that's more of societal success and then internally you're unhappy. So let's unpack um, what made you really want to tap into being an optimization coach and what part of your life did you experience that breaking point where you said, you know what, enough is enough. Yeah, so I planned and prepared pretty much my entire life to be an attorney. So I made the decision when I was in like middle school that I was going to become an attorney and I worked really hard to that end. And so I graduated summa cum laude from college. I published as an undergraduate in college. Then I went on to Duke Law on a scholarship. I published there. And then I was recruited by it. I worked for one of the largest law firms in the Southeast. And so it was like, if you were to look at my life on paper, it was like I had everything. I had a really good job, um, and the work that I was doing, it was significant work. So I was a, I was a corporate litigator. Um, I had this really good job. I was making all this money. I had this charming house like next to the city. I had like the beautiful wardrobe, and I could go on the vacations. Like I had all the things. And in addition to that, I felt really um, respected by my colleagues. I felt like I was doing significant legal work, and I mean, I was. Uh, In addition to the corporate litigation work that I did, I also did a lot of work for um, pro bono work for victims of domestic violence, and I was eventually named the head of that project at our firm. And so, you know, when I looked at my life on paper, it really was like, I have everything that I worked so hard for. I have everything that I thought that I wanted. I had everything that I thought was going to make me happy. But even though I had all of those things, I was, I would say, deeply unhappy. And it was like, I didn't know why. It was like, I should be happy. Look at all of these things that I have. And so... As the years went on, it was like I kept like telling myself like, no, I should be happy and like trying to make it work, but I just wasn't. And it was like nothing that I was doing, no amount of like success was changing that. And so it took me, it took me years, quite frankly, but I finally did leave my job and it wasn't like I left in this really like clear state of mind. I didn't. It was like, I'm really unhappy. I should be happy, but I'm not. 
but my job's kind of like the biggest thing in my life. And also, I mean, as much as it was a, a very good job, a very like um, a respected job, we worked a lot. It was high stress. It was high pressure. And so it was like there was this part of me that was like, my job is the problem. And then there's a part of me that's like, no, the job is not the problem. But it was like I got to the point where it was like something has to give in my life. Something has to change. Because that job really was the biggest thing in my life, I felt like that was the thing that had to change. And so I did leave that job. And I left without a plan, which was... uh, an interesting thing to do because in the position that I was in, I had a great resume. Like if I wanted to move to another job, I could have. Um, the firm would have even helped me get another job if I wanted them to. But it was like, again, there was this part of me that was like, if I just go to a different job, I'm going to feel the same. Nothing's really going to be different in my life. And so what I did was I left that job and I did, I left without a plan. All I knew was like, I want answers. I want to understand why am I feeling the way I'm feeling? And can I feel differently? Like, is there a different experience of life that I can have? Is there a different experience of life that we can have? Because as much as I was like conflicted, like I should be happy, I have everything. At the same time, I did recognize in my colleagues, not all of them, but a number of them, that it was like they had all of this success. But it was like, you know, when I'd go in in the morning, be like, hey, how are you? would be like, live in the dream, like this sarcastic kind of thing, you know? And it was just like, I, I wanted to live the dream. Like, that's what I thought I was working towards. That's what I thought I was doing. That's what I thought I was going to be getting. And so, and so, yeah, I did. I left that job really with the, like, I want some answers. I need some answers. I need to know if I can have a different experience. So let's pause there and just really let that marinate and digest in because you left your corporate job as a corporate litigator with no plan. You did not really have a roadmap, but prior to you leaving, did you ever think about going to a counselor, a therapist, or a paid professional to kind of help you unpack why you were feeling the way you were and just to uncover the RCA root cause analysis of your situation because you had everything on paper and you were still battling, but you were battling internally because you weren't happy as an individual. Externally, everything looked fine and dandy, but it was internally. And I wonder if you did a RCA, root cause analysis, and asked yourself, am I doing this for me or am I doing it because it's what someone in my family told me I should be doing? And you held on to that for so long that you started to just take it on as the weight on your shoulder and just keep on going because maybe you didn't want to disappoint someone that you loved or someone that mentored you? Yeah, so I certainly was searching for answers the whole time I was working. I was seeing different practitioners. I was seeing different healers. I was I was listening to spiritual and other thought leaders any spare minute that I had, I was constantly looking for answers, constantly trying to understand myself, understand why I felt the way I was feeling. Um, And at the end of it, I wasn't getting the answers that I was looking for. But moreover, it was like I wasn't feeling different. I'd go see all these different people and all these different practitioners, read all of this stuff, um... And it was like, maybe I'd have a momentary like, oh, I feel a little bit better now at this moment, or I feel a little bit better here. But it wasn't, nothing was lasting. Nothing was really um, creating any sort of real change in my life. And so it was really at that, you know, it was after trying all those things. And of course, I was working a lot, so I was busy. But it was still after trying all these different things. And it's like, I'm still not getting a result. I'm still not feeling different. 
Do you feel like you were open to receiving a result? Because sometimes when we are so busy with work, and I'm just going to say my personal example, I spent 15 years in corporate America. 12 of those years were spent in oil and gas and energy where it's very, very high stress and very high functioning de depending on what department you were in. I spent, you know, a bulk of my career in drilling, which we're drilling million dollar wells a day, we're fracking, we're doing all of this stuff. And you better pay attention to what you're what you're doing because it could cost the company millions. And it's like you want to do something else, but then you're telling you're telling yourself no because the salary feels good. The benefits that you're getting is like, woo, these benefits. You're able to live in a good neighborhood that you choose to live in. So socioeconomic, you're able to hang out with people in your status without being worried about certain things. But then when you go home, it's like, who am I? You look in the mirror and you really don't know who you are. But it has to come to the point where different people are trying to help you, but you're not open to really receive it. So then you shut off a certain part of you where you're not really willing to step outside of the comfort zone into the unknown because there's certain things that are going on. So I don't know if that was your experience, but that was my experience. But the beauty of it was that I was forced out of the door via a layoff in 2021. And that helped me to open my eyes to see, because had it not been for the layoff, I probably would still be at that corporate job, you know, climbing the corporate ladder, being swooned by the bells and whistles and et cetera. But then dying a little bit each day inside because I knew I wasn't happy or fulfilled. Yeah, I think that's that's such a yeah, there's there's a lot of um a lot of truth in what you're saying there. I mean, it certainly was when you're making so much money and you have such a good job, it's so difficult to walk away from that. And it's like too you know, I did have this and I think that's really why in the end I knew it was I mean, I I I knew deep down, but I didn't really know. It wasn't completely clear to me, but I knew that it was like, I need to step away from this so I can really put all my energy and all my focus and all my attention on myself and on finding answers and have myself like not be in this situation while I'm trying to do that. At the same time, though, I will say that even though that's the path that I ended up taking, I actually don't think everybody has to do that. It was just, for me, that was the thing that was, I think, and now that I'm in retrospect, that was the thing for me to do. Um, but yeah. And now that you're helping others with your optimization programs and being an optimization coach, what are the top five things that you would encourage somebody to look into whenever it comes to optimizing their life? Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if I would, I don't know if there's an exact five, but what I would say is really what my work is about is helping people to understand who they are and how they function. And so people may say, like, I know who I am and I know how I function. But I would say if you're living in states of overwhelm, fear, stress, worry, if you're living in states where life feels monotonous or feels like a grind or feels like hard work, if you're living in states where you feel like life is depleting you, it's like you're lacking energy, it's like it's taking from you as opposed to energizing you. If you're living in states where you're having like, where you feel like you're not good enough or you feel like your thoughts are controlling you in a sense, um, I would say you actually don't know who you are and how you function. You actually have some misunderstandings about that because although living in states like this have become, like we look at living in states like this as if this is normal. And this is not normal. It has become normalized. It's not normal. And so our fundamental nature is so different. Like these are not, these are not states that are in our fundamental nature. Our fundamental nature is so different. And so when we really understand who we are and how we function, we can have a very different experience of this experience. And so really what my 
my work is focused on is really a person understanding themselves. And so really what it means, so really like optimizing your life, it's not something that's coming from outside of you. It's not something that you're going off and becoming. It's something that you already are. We're just bringing it forth. It's like we kind of have this thing in this experience. I need to go become something. It's like we're born in some deficient and defective state, right? And then it's like we've got to go remedy that and we've got to go become something. You're not here to become something. You already are something. What we're here is we're here to express ourselves creatively, to be and experience the uniqueness that we are in this experience at this time. And there's such beauty in that. And so really optimizing your life, again, it's about a person understanding who they are and how they function. And once you understand who you are and how you function, you're so empowered because it's like now you understand how you get results. You understand how to bring about the life that you want. It's like, why am I experiencing the life I'm experiencing? Oh, it's because of this. And what I found is like, even for myself, it was like, it was, it was confusing in a sense because it was like, I worked so hard and I did everything I thought I was supposed to do, right? And I'm not happy, right? Or we might look at other people and say, this person worked so hard, and yet the person who didn't work as hard got the promotion, right? It's like these things can seem so confusing when in fact they're not. And so, again, it's just really about, my work is really a deep dive into the person, understanding who they are and how they function. And that includes, too, understanding one's thoughts. So I would say, really, the key would be, focusing on you, who you are and how you function. And then also, too, there's an understanding included in that is understanding of our thoughts. Because again, that's part of who you are and how you function. And how a lot of people see the thoughts is like, oh, my mind, it's off doing all these crazy things. It's such a, oh, I just wish I could kind of be free of it in a way, you know. And um, really, the mind is meant to serve us in powerful and profound ways, and it can. But again, it's a matter of understanding, well, how do we harness the power of the mind to serve us? And so, so yeah, that's really what my work is focused on. It's really all about you. It's really all about the person. I like how you said that, Kara. And um, here's a situation or scenario that I do with some of my clients, I always ask them to think about these two questions. The first question is, when you were growing up as a child and you were in primary school or elementary school, how many times did you hear this question? What do you want to be when you grow up? Think about that and jot down a number if you can remember. Now, how many times did you hear the question, who do you want to be when you grow up? And I guarantee you, you did not hear the who do you want to be when you grow when you grow up. You heard what do you want to be? And I feel like that is the root cause analysis because so many times people like to place us in boxes, they like to label us, and they like to condition us by being a what? A doctor, a lawyer, a nurse, a EMT, or whatnot. That is a what, but that is not tied to who you are. Who you are is tied to your feelings, your morals, your values, your characteristics, how you want to show up in the world, how you want to leave an imprint, how you want to leave an impact, how you destined to be a world changer, what your purpose is, what your mission is, and why you were uniquely created for such a time as this. And if you think about who that is going inwardly. That's you doing some soul searching, self-reflecting, and et cetera. What are some exercises that can be done? Journaling around it. Whenever you think about who you are, write it down. When you think about where you want to go, write it down. When you think about some of the thoughts that pop up in your head, where maybe you're struggling with IS, imposter syndrome, write it down, then ask yourself, why am I thinking the way that I'm thinking? Am I being conditioned to what other people are saying? Am I being conditioned to comparing myself to somebody else that is in my life? Am I being conditioned 
by generational curses or generational lineage, what was passed down from generation to generation. And you really have to take the onion and peel it back in order to get to the core, to ask yourself, why are you being conditioned the way that you're being conditioned? And if it is not helping you personally or professionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally, then why the heck are you doing it? How is it helping you become a better human being for society? And I think when I do that exercise, it really helps them know the difference. And then you almost see the T-chart and the comparison between the what and the who. Yeah, I love that. That's great. Super helpful. So now when we think about some of the clients that you have coached, Kara, Have you noticed any recurring themes? Because I know everyone is different, but I'm sure you've seen maybe some patterns where you can start to look at those patterns and maybe teach on a teach on a course about it to help like course correct or help other people who may be going through something similar. Yeah, so the clients that I currently have are clients who really they're in a similar situation as I was. They really, they have it all. They have like degrees from prestigious schools. They have very good jobs. They're making a lot of money Um, on paper. They have it all. They have like And and I felt this way too. It was like no amount of success that I, no amount of success that I had was ever good enough. It was like you you would think like I'd get to that point where I'd be like, okay, like now I actually feel good about myself. Now I actually feel like I'm worthy, and it just never happened. And it was like I I started to realize like it's not there's no amount that could kind of do that to me, and so. It's so interesting when I work with different people how on paper, again, they just have this really ideal looking life. But when you really go down into like, how are they actually feeling? Like you'd think they would just feel like I'm just crushing it. You know what I mean? But they don't. And it's because like, again, where we are and you kind of you touched on this. We're so external focused in this experience. It's like when you have all of these external things, then you're going to feel a certain way. And that's just not how it works. You feel a certain way because you feel a certain way, not because you have these external things. And really our worth and value does not come from all of these external things that we get. And so when we're looking to those things to kind of bring this sense of worth and value, I mean, we're looking at something that isn't going to happen. I mean, that's just not going to happen. That worth and value isn't going to come from those external things. So, so yes, generally, I think that people that do, that I have worked with, they, they are in a similar, quite similar situation that I was in. I would challenge you to ask um, your next client or maybe some of the current clients that you're working with this question, how much are they paying you to sleep on your dreams? Hmm. Because there are so many dreamers out there, but they never really tap into their endless possibilities because they are so afraid of failing, they're afraid of what their family members may say, or what their friends may say, or they're afraid of starting all all the way over. Because when you get to the top of the ladder, or the top of the mountain, things look different than when you're on the bottom. But sometimes in life, you have to go up the ladder and come down the ladder to really appreciate both vantage points. And if you never appreciate the bottom, just like you appreciate the top, then you're missing beauties in each one. Because in life, we go through various seasons for various reasons. And there is always a lesson to be learned and a lesson to be taught. Yeah, for sure. So true. Life is so dynamic. It's so complex. There's so much in this experience for us 
That is certainly true. And we do tend to, in this experience, have this kind of like, we pick this thing and then we are just supposed to stay in it for the rest of our lives. You know, we are such creative beings. And again, we are so dynamic and so complex. There's so much for us to experience. And at the same time, though, this isn't to say that um, people need to leave their jobs like I did. I just I like to make that clear because ultimately, in my experience, what I've come to understand is that like I was unhappy when I was in my job, but the issue wasn't my job. The issue was me. Like the issue was me really not understanding who I was. The issue was me not understanding what my creative expressions were in the world. Like, it wasn't the job. And so there are some people who are in that job. I know them. I worked with them. They thrive in that type of environment. They thrive with that type of work. And it energizes them. And those are the people I always wanted to work with because I wanted to feel that way. But we're all structured differently. We all have unique ways that we're structured. We all have our own unique creative gifts. And so, and also too, one of the things I get into in my programs is how an individual is uniquely structured to thrive in this experience and what their unique gifts and talents are. And so, and so really like once we understand that for some people, they're going to stay in their jobs they're going to thrive in their jobs and it might even be a place for them and but for some people it will be different and so it just really varies um based on the person but i just like to make clear it's not like to be in your optimized self or to be in the truth of who you are you have to walk away from everything and leave everything for some people it might be the case for me it kind of was but um It's not, it doesn't have to be the case for everybody. Yeah, I totally agree because what, what we're talking about is our personal story and what we had to do in order to get to where we want to go. And that may not be your case, but I would encourage you to listen and follow your heart, write things down, get a strategic plan and make sure that you are doing something that makes you feel good. And there's always going to be a still small voice or some people like to say discernment or gut instinct that will navigate you through life, but it will never steer you astray. So pay attention to that still small voice. And don't think that it's crazy whenever you feel out of touch or you just feel like something is off balance because that's a sign that your body is telling you it's time to change course. It's time to switch the navigate the navigation. Kind of like whenever we're navigating in a car and we put on our GPS and it says rerouting, rerouting because it's protecting you from an accident, it's protecting you from danger or it's protecting you from being in a traffic jam for so long. So think about that. Just like there's a GPS that we use to navigate to get to one de- one point to another, one destination to another, you have a GPS in you that is going to help you navigate through life. So Cara, Kara, I want you to leave us with one or two gems that complement the core pillars of GEMS podcast, which are to educate, inspire, and motivate all while we intersect the dots of D, E, I, and B, which is diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, because it takes all of us coming together to make this world a better place. So I would say, and this goes to something that we've been talking about, but what I generally like to say to people and leave people with is you hold within you great knowing. You can trust that knowing and trust it and follow that above all. Wow. Say that one more time because that was so profound. You hold within you great knowing and you can trust that knowing and you can follow it above all. Wow. So everything that we're going through, we hold it within. We could trust it. We could follow it and we could hold it above all. Those are amazing. 
And how can the listeners and viewers connect with you? What is your website and where do you hang out on social media? So my website's www.caranicolebatar.com. And I'm also on Facebook and Instagram at karanicolebatar.com. Really the best way to get in touch with me is my website. I do offer complimentary discovery calls for my optimization programs. And also on there, you can sign up for my Kundalini Yoga classes. And also for the, I do these two different types of readings. One's called a Manifesting Blueprint and one's called Soul Realignment. You can find out about those and sign up for those all on my website. And there you have it, listeners and viewers of GEMS Podcast. You just heard Kara Nicole Batar, and we talked about optimizing your life. What does that look like, and what do you need to do to make sure that you're really tapping into full optimization? Remember that you are uniquely created for such a time as this. You are a masterpiece. You do matter and you are here for an amazing purpose, but you have to believe in yourself, trust in yourself, and know that you are going to achieve your wildest dreams. You're going to have success, but sometimes in order to have success, you must take a few steps back and analyze where you currently are, where you want to go, and what you need to do to truly connect the dots. Start by working internally, and once you do the work internally, it is going to manifest externally, and then you're going to have the full connection, mind, body, and soul, and everything is going to be in alignment. And until we chat next time, peace, love, and lots of blessings. Have yourself an amazing day. And don't forget to follow the podcast and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gems with Genesis Amaris Kemp.